Hello, my name's Sophie D'Souza. Welcome to my channel, Sophie Stained Glass. I'm doing a series of videos for absolute and complete beginners. Those of you who've never done it before, maybe you're thinking about doing it, maybe you've just dipped your toe in, um, you'll see that I'm going to do and have done some very small ornament type projects. Um, the reason I've done ornaments is because they doesn't matter if they grow or shrink, they're not going into a window, they don't have to fit a frame, so they're very forgiving. Um, and there doesn't seem to be anything else out there on the internet that does that. But this particular video I'm making for a student who's coming to me to make a little panel, and I'm going to explain everything you need to know about designing for glass, because obviously you're restricted by the medium. So I hope you find it useful, and let's begin. The first thing to understand about designing for stained glass is that let's say you're going to make a piece that's A4, it's going to go into an A4 frame. Your glass doesn't go from edge to edge because on the outside of your panel you'll have a piece of 12mm, because that's generally the standard, lead. Now this is what lead looks like in profile. It's H shaped and it has a heart in the middle which is two millimeters. And as this is a piece of 12 mil lead, that means this side of the flange is five mil and this side is five mil. So the glass is going to slip inside the lead like this. And that means your glass has to finish two mil plus five mil away from the edge of your paper. So you're going to draw a line 7 mil all the way around your piece of paper and that will be the edge of your glass where you cut and you mustn't cut on the other side of that line or else your panel will grow which can be corrected. Lead can be quite forgiving because you can trim it, um, but let's assume you want to do it accurately and not have to trim. So this is giving you the outer perimeter of your stained glass panel. And like I say, it's gonna fit into an A4 frame. So there we have it. And that means that when we put the outside lead, the glass is just going to butt up to it. And you're going to be still within your A4. Now, the more pieces you cut for your panel, the harder it will be and the longer it will take. Do not be tempted to do something really detailed complex or curvy. This is your first panel and you want to feel like you can do it, not feel like you're rubbish. So this would be an example of a simple, achievable kind of pattern for a beginner. It's only got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces. A lot of it is straight lines and just one curve. The thing to mention about curves is not only will they be slightly harder for you to cut than straight lines because you can use a ruler with straight lines, they, the more curves you have, the more they will exaggerate any discrepancy. I don't know if any of you are woodworkers, but if you are, you'll know that a mitre joint will magnify a discrepancy more than a butt joint. If you're not a woodworker, that will be utterly meaningless to you. But basically, avoid curves and avoid complicated curves. So you want to, let's see, if we did one, two, three, 12 pieces, this is about how small each of your pieces would be. You don't want to go any smaller than that and you possibly want to stay bigger than that. The other thing to remember is glass can only be cut in certain shapes. Obviously any straight line is okay except this, you can't do an internal edge. 
If you wanted this shape in your pattern, you would have to take the cut all the way across there, all the way across there, or all the way across there. Because what you're doing is scoring and snapping. There's no way you can turn a corner. The other thing to say is that you can't do, and this may be self-evident to those of you who have given it a bit of thought, you can't do that. And I'm not saying in industrial situations you won't get a hole cutter, uh, but you cannot remove a piece of glass from the middle of a, of a sheet. Now, curves. Let's go on to curves, because this is something that you will understand more once you've started um, cutting glass, because you very quickly get a sense of what's achievable. Let's say you've got a piece of glass like this. This is achievable. This isn't. Now, possibly a very experienced glass cutter could do this, but trying to lead it up would be tricky as well. Um, so keep your curves shallow. The other thing you mustn't do is have a curve that goes really close. Let's say this is the this is the piece you're trying to keep. This will snap across here when you try and cut it. This piece, if you wanted this piece, that would be achievable, but this wouldn't. So if you're going to if you're going to want this sort of shape, you will have to add in a lead line there. So add in a cut there, because um, yeah, you can't do it. The next thing to talk about is the fact that in between all your pieces of glass is going to be lead. And in the same way that we had to accommodate lead at the outside edge, when you're drawing your pattern, you have to allow two millimeters between each piece because obviously if you don't, and you just cut them edge to edge, when you put the lead in, it's all going to grow. So, if you're drawing on a computer package, you want to select a 2 mil line. Pretty easy to do. If you're drawing by hand, I suggest a Sharpie, because they come out at about 2 millimeters. So let's go back to our first piece, where we draw on the outside edge. Let's say I'm going to do, I'm going to start with a border and let's say I'm going to make it the width of this ruler. So, I mean, you might want to draw this out in pencil, obviously, before you start filling it in, in pen, but I'm not going to worry. So, this Sharpie is going to give you the correct spacing between your glass. There. It's quite customary when you have a border not to have long lengths you can if that's your aesthetic choice but you can also add divisions because it will add interest and actually as these are straight lines it's not going to be difficult the other thing is not doing it completely symmetrically will add interest and what giving the, these extra pieces will allow you to do is, instead of having just say, say you're going to do a, a red piece in the corner and you're going to make this blue, you can add glass with different textures, different colours, and even if they're just subtly different, actually subtly different is nice, um, you'll find that will add visual interest. So you've done your border, and the thing to remember about designing is that although that looks like 
I don't know, it looks like it's about an inch. I don't know what it is. It's just over, uh, it's, it's 27 mil. Once you've got your, let's do that. Once you've got your lead there, and you've got another piece of lead on the other side, there, actually let's cut that so you can actually see what I mean. So we'll line it up on the pattern, and what you want to do is cut on the inside of the line so that you are allowing for that lead joint. Okay? So there we are. We've got we've got our piece cut. Now you've got it fitted into your outside lead. And then you've got another piece of lead. Now it wouldn't be a 12mm piece of lead because that would be too chunky for the proportions of this design. It would more likely, for a beginner, be an 8mm piece of lead because 6mm won't cover your mistakes. But look, it's shrunk. It's smaller than you've drawn it. Look at the size of that compared to the size of that. And that's because you've got this flange of lead overlapping your cut glass. So do remember that even though you've drawn it 27mm, you won't see all 27mm because of the flange of glass overlapping. Now then, let's draw the rest of this freehand and let's say we're going to do hills. So we'll have a hill like this and a hill like this um, and we will have, let's see, should we make it a tree or a sunrise? Let's do a sun in the corner here and we'll do I mean, this isn't very imaginative, but you know, it's only for demonstration purposes. That's about the proportions of what you should be thinking for your first design. For the actual scope here, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in the in the in inside the border, seven pieces, which is very achievable. And although you've got all these pieces on the outside edge, um, they're very easy to cut and lead together because they're just straight lines. So you will probably find, because you're a beginner, this bit of your design will be the tricky bit and because it's got curves it might grow or if you're one of the other kind of people it might shrink. People are kind of divided into growing and shrinking when it comes to stained glass. Um, so um, that's the sort of curves you should be thinking about including. Nothing much more complicated than that. Let's do another design that might work. So let's pretend that I have drawn my outside um, edge. Um, borders are quite nice to add because they really frame your design. Um, and you can actually do a, a border with clear but textured glass and that can really make your design sort of um, pop. Uh, you might want to do something like um, a fish. And you could use all sorts of um, so you've got to put a line in there because obviously you can't cut this You'd be you the whole thing round. You'd have to put um, put a piece of uh, lead in there. You might want to add more. You could cut this in one piece, and you could cut this in one piece. But you might want to add sort of more design elements, which would add interest. So this could be blue. C and this could be orange fish. I mean, I wouldn't add too many lines. This is probably a little complex, but obviously you saw me adding lines and making it more complex as I went. Um, so you could stop a bit earlier than that and you'd have your orange fish. The other thing you might like to do to help you visualize is fill in a bit of color. So um, you don't have to stick to necessarily traditional colours. Um, there's all sorts of pretty glass. There's um, glass that's a mix of yellow and orange. 
and then you can start to do the the C. darker at the bottom and maybe lighter this doesn't have a lot of colors actually I'm sort of looking for light blues and they're going to purples but I think you see what I'm getting at here so doing this will help you to visualize what your design is going to look like and then it will help you when you select and buy your glass. Um, let's see what we can do with this. So, we might want this red. It's not very red, red, but it doesn't matter. And then we'll have a few shades of blue. Oops, it's quite difficult to design with it, this camera next to me. But I didn't want it to be upside down for you. So, I'm going to just add a bit of variety to the blue. There we are. Now, we want some green for the hills. Let's have a yellow hill. Uh, let's see, yellow sun, and, or maybe an orange sun, actually. And we'll have some yellow, violet, orange. Obviously, you're going to spend a lot more time than me um, working this out. But there we go. That will give you an idea of whether you've got the balance right. So what I'd recommend you do is do your line drawing first in pencil, go over it in pen, and then make a load of photocopies of it, and then experiment with the different colours. Alternatively, do it on a computer, and then you've got endless endless opportunities to swap the colours about but nothing wrong with doing it by hand um, I hope that has covered it all and that you can get on and have a go at designing for your first window but my main advice is simple is better and simpler designs can be every bit as effective as complicated designs and a whole lot nicer to make so thank you for watching. Um, let me know how you get on. If you have any questions, let me know. Please like, comment and subscribe and check out the other videos in my absolute complete beginners list um, because I want to help you along.